Welcome back everyone, I am Lelu and today let's create some 2D lightning effects in Godot. As you probably know, most of my content until now is mainly about 3D VFX and 3D will always be the main focus of this channel but many people ask me in the comments if I could do some 2D tutorials as well so I decided to start a mini 2D VFX tutorial series oh and in case you want to create this effect in 3D I will recommend you to check out my 3D electric lightning tutorial so without further ado let's get started This tutorial will be divided into three parts. First, we will create the main thunder effect. Then, we will go ahead and add some nice sparks to the thunder impact point. And finally, we will add some animations and extra details. Let's start with the main thunder beam. Before jumping to Godot, we first need to create a texture for the Thunder VFX. For this, you can use GIMP or Photoshop or any painting software you want. This time I will use Krita because it's nice and it's completely free. Okay, first we need to create an horizontal image. I will use this resolution. Now let's fill the background with a black color and create a new layer and using the airbrush tool I will go ahead and draw a shaky line like this. Now we need to make sure that this texture is repetitive so I will check this little cross icon at the top and fill this gap to make sure that the texture is repetitive. Now let's delete some parts of the thunder using the eraser tool. This will make our thunder look more spiky and interesting. Excellent! Now I will duplicate the thunder layer so now I can pick the duplicated layer below and go to filter and add a Gaussian blur filter. I will blur this so I can get a nice glow like effect. Let's see. Okay, I think this it's looking nice. Finally, I will go back to my thunder layer, go to filter start GMICQT and select Morphological Filter. This is a special filter that will help us to gradually blend the thunder so later on we can use some tricks in Godot to make this thunder line disappear. Okay, that's it. Let's save this texture. I will name it VFX Thunder. And now let's open Godot. Okay, so let's open our Godot project and I will import our Thunder texture into Godot. Let's go ahead and create a line to the node. And let's create two points, one, two, set a width of 150. Now let's go to the material and let's create a new shader material. Create a new shader and this will be a visual shader for a canvas shader. And let's name it, for example, Thunder 
shader. Now, if we go to the shader and double click into our thunder shader, here we have the shader graph and we can start creating the shader. But first, let's go to flex and set this to be unshaded. Okay, now let's go ahead and right click and create a texture 2D parameter. Let's name it basic texture, set the type to color and enable repeat mode. So the texture is repetitive. Cool. Now in order to use this texture we need to sample it, set this to color, Excellent. Now, if we go back to to the line 2D mesh, in the material option, here we have this new option, shader parameters, and now here we have the basic texture. Let's drag and drop our thunder texture over here. But as you can see, nothing happens into the line 2D. So in order to fix this, let's go to fill and set the texture mode to stretch. Cool, now we can see the thunder. Let's go back to the shader and I want this thunder mesh to, to move. So in order to do that, Let's go ahead, right click and create a UV panning node. So now if we move this offset option, as you can see, you can see how the thunder moves, which is awesome. But in order to do this automatically, let's go ahead and create a time node. And let's multiply this time for a vector 2D. So maybe we can put a value of 1 and 0. So now, as you can see, the, the Thunder Mesh is moving. But in order to have much more control over this, let's create a vector 2 parameter and we can name it for example speed so now if we go back to the to the line to the mesh into the shader parameters we can see the speed option let's put a speed of minus 2 and 0 Cool, now let's go back to the shader graph and I want to do some changes to this shader. So first of all, because this is a black and white texture, we don't need to use all the colors of the texture. We only need to use a single channel, maybe the red channel. So this is better for performance. So now I want this thunder mesh to appear and disappear when I want. In order to do that, let's create a special node. Let's right click and look for a smooth step node. Connect the texture over here. And as you can see, if I move this zero value, you can see how the thunder is disappearing when it goes to 1, which is really cool. We can create a parameter to control this value. So let's right click and create a float parameter. Let's name it vanishing value. And this will be in a range between 0 and 1. 
there you go now if we go back to the to the line 2d mesh in the material options here we can see the vanishing value and by scrolling this we can make the thunder appear and disappear finally let's add a color to this thunder so let's go back to the shader and let's right click and create a color input node and I want to multiply this color with the result of the texture and that's it this is the shader basically we have a color over here here we can control the thickness and disappear the thunder and we have a texture which is moving with a speed that's basically it for the shader we can close the shader and now if we go here to to color we can set any color we want for the thunder in this case i will use a raw value with a value of 1.8 1.2 and 0 0.22 Finally, I want this thunder to be transparent or to add with the environment. And one quick way to do it is to go to the shader and go to modes and set the blend mode to add. And that's it for the thunder, guys. We can make it appear and disappear. We can move these points if we want and we can even add more points which is really cool okay the thunder beam is completed now let's go ahead and add some sparks as for the sparks effect we will use this special texture i have created and let's drag it to Godot we will use it in a moment but first let's go ahead and create a GPU particles 2D node and assign our glow texture also let's go ahead and create a particle process material so now as you can see we have these big particles and this is too big so let's go to the particle process material to display scale and set a random scale between 0 0.05 and 0 0.2 also I want these particles to stretch into the x-axis so let's create a new scale XYZ curve and let's go to the curve X and set this value to 0 0.5 so it's stretched and then I want these particles to go small like like so excellent now let's do some changes to the particle systems for example let's go to the amount and set the amount to 15 particles and let's set a lifetime of 0 0.15 and set the FPS to 60 now let's go to particle flags enable align y so now the particles are aligned with the velocity go to spawn position and i want these particles to spawn into a ring position with a radius of 50 now let's go to velocity and set a uh, initial velocity into the y axis between minus 500 and minus 400 
now let's go to animated velocity and set a radial velocity with a random value between 500 and 700 okay now this is start looking better like real sparks let's go down to the material option and let's create a new canvas item material and set this to add and set the light mode to unshaded finally let's give a nice color to these sparks so let's go up and let's pick any color we want in this case I will pick a color with a really strong value with a raw value of 2.2 1.3 and 0.5 as you can see the sparks are trespassing through the floor and we don't need that so let's go and select the platform and set an index of 1 so we have a nice thunder effect with sparks now we only need to add some extra details and maybe an animation to make it a little bit more interesting. In order to keep everything organized, let's name everything. This will be the Thunder and let's name this one Sparks. Let's also create a node 2D. And I will put everything inside the node 2D and name this VFX underscore Thunder. This is a good practice to keep everything organized. Now let's go ahead and create uh, another GPU particles 2D node. And we can name it Flare. For this particle we will use the same glowing texture we use for the sparks and also we need to create a new particle process material let's move it over here now let's create a new material new canvas item material and set this the blend mode to be add and the light mode to be unshaded also for these particles set the amount to one we only need one single particle and this is falling down because of the gravity so let's go to the particle process material let's go to accelerations and set the gravity to zero now let's do some changes to this particle system go to display and set a random size between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9 also let's create a new scale curve and I want these particles to start very small and then go big and then go small again and set the lifetime of 0 0.15 set the FPS to 60 and finally let's set a color let's go to display color curves and Let's pick a color. I will pick a really strong color with a raw value of 1.2, 1 and 0.5. There you go. Finally, in case we want our thunder effect to illuminate all the objects in the scene, we can go ahead and add a point light and I will put the glowing texture into my point light so now as you can see it illuminates all the objects in the scene I will put it here in the in the impact point and let's put a yellow color maybe we can increase the energy to three and the scale to 1.3 
Finally, let's add some animations. So let's go ahead, right click, and I want to save this branch as a scene. And it's out of place, so let's center this. And now I will go ahead and create an animation player. So let's create two animations first. Let's create an end animation. And for this animation, I want the vanishing value to go from zero to over here to a value of one. So the, as you can see, the thunder disappear. Maybe we can make it faster over here like so. Also, just to make sure that this is disappearing, I want to go over here and disable the visibility at this point of the animation. Okay, now I will go to the sparks and disable this emitting value and key. Do the same for the flare. Disable this. Do the same for the light. I want this light to go from a value of 3 to a value of 0 over here. And also, just in case, a little bit after that, I want to disable visibility. Okay, so with this animation, we are Desactivating the thunder. Let's do the same, but uh, the opposite to the to a uh, start animation. Let's create a start animation, and for this, I want to enable visibility of the thunder, and I want to go to the vanishing value. So I want this thunder to start in one. And then over here, go back to zero. So you can see how the thunder is appearing. Now let's do the same for the sparks. Let's select the sparks, enable the sparks in the animation. Do the same for the flare. So as you can see, if I hit play, we have the thunder. If I move to the end animation, the thunder disappears. And finally, I will enable this option over here. You can use a script if you want, or a twin, but I prefer to use the animation player in combination with a script. So this way it's much more easy and you have a better control of what is happening in the VFX. So that's basically it guys, in case you want to support me, please check out my Patreon page, you will get access to this project and a huge library of projects as well, and I want to say a big thank you to all of my Patrons supporters, you guys are awesome, also a special big thanks goes to my top tier Patrons of this month, Phoenix John and Alex Kio, and that's it guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.